What can we see from the definition, right? Discipleship family. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday of ordinary time. Today we also have a special celebration. You are all going to join us in our community of the Eucharistic Franciscan Missionary Sisters of Los Angeles and celebrate Sister Catherine Marie's 25th anniversary as a religious sister.
I charge you before God who gives who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession to keep the commandments without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only rule of the kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord.
parishioners, and something special today is the acknowledgement of 25 years of Sister Catherine Diaz in saying yes to the Lord and serving as religious. I don't know about you, but having four sisters living down the street from you, <laughs> I think they're on good behavior tonight. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have them at the end of the block, that's for sure. That's for sure. You know, today we do give praise in God, uh, praise to God and thanks to the Lord for Sister Catherine, for all that she does, and for her giving her fiat, you know, as our lady gave her fiat, her yes to the angel Gabriel, everything was put into motion. And when we give our yeses to the Lord, it puts things into motion in our spiritual lives. And so she gave her yes, her fiat, 25 years ago, but the journey began way before 25 years ago began truly at the day of her baptism, where she was welcomed into the body of Christ in the church, a living member of the church, being one with Jesus, being baptized in the name of the Trinity, God dwelling with her already as an infant, and with the help of her parents, with the help of family, with the help of the church, the sacraments, receiving First Communion, her encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist, the bread of life, he who sustains her, nourishes her, be she being confirmed at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation where she then calls upon the Spirit for all the gifts that she is in need of in order to live out her life as a disciple of Christ. I had confirmation this morning out of the migrant camp out on Harney Lake us, but we have to ask for them. God is never going to push himself on us force himself on us. It's choosing the need and the knowing our needs and turning to the Holy Spirit for the fruits of gift. So confirmation for sister, it's the same thing. All these gifts and fruits and then discovering her talents as she matured in her life to this point in her life. Where was God going to be calling her? Where was she going to be exercising the gifts of the Spirit for the sake of the kingdom? She received and knows that whenever Jesus in the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of penance, counting on him and his forgiveness, his grace and mercy upon her as she continues her journey. And then she truly came to know Jesus in a special way 25 years ago. She professed her life to the Lord and religious life as a religious sister, this special relationship with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, coming before Him, encountering Him, adoring Him, that friendship of not only Christ your brother, but Christ your Lord. of the Spirit to check out this particular religious order to see if this is really where God was calling you. The Eucharistic Prince I was a trouble for trying to remember your order, sisters. But Eucharistic Franciscan missionary. I mean, that's pulling everything together in their charism, in their apostolate. A beautiful thing. Jesus drew himself to you and you to him in the Eucharist and continues to sustain you, Sister Catherine, through your adoration of him in the Blessed Sacrament. Not only consuming him, but adoring him. And adoring him for what? Adoring him for the good of the world, adoring him for the good of the priests, praying for priests and vocations, that we're sustained by God's grace in our lives. And so your prayers before the Blessed Sacrament on for our behalf, a big thank you for us here, the clergy. The charism of Sister Catherine's religious order is very much Christ-centered, Eucharistic-centered, and we're in the midst of a Eucharistic revival 
So what the sisters do here in Stockton already, in their convent, every day, throughout their schedule of their day, throughout in the midst of the work of their day, is to be in the presence of Christ, the Eucharist of Jesus. And Jesus then feeds them with his grace in order for them to do the other part of their apostolic mission, to go out. The sisters go out, they don't stay in their convent, they don't stay at the corner down the block from my home. They're out and about. Sometimes I'm coming home at 9 o'clock and their car's not in the driveway. <laughs> and they can't possibly be in low down at this hour. They can't possibly be out in Fort. They can't possibly be here in St. Bernadette's at this hour. I wonder where those sisters are. <laughs> they're busy. They're doing God's work. That's what they're doing. When I'm pulling in, ready to call it a day, they're, they're not home yet. Committed. Because their life, Sister Catherine's life, and her son, putting all that they have received into action. That's the call of the Eucharist. It's a sacrament of charity. It's a sacrament to animate us. So we go out of our way for the sake of the other. And that's exactly what Sister Catherine has been doing for 25 years. She's going out of her way for the sake of the other. Be it religious education for our young ones. Be it sacramental preparation for the youth. Be it this commitment to catechesis and the new evangelization, which is part of the charismatic, right? bringing people to Christ. She has been faithful in that for 25 years. And then, as I said earlier, she and her sisters pray for the sanctification of this guy. For the bishop, praise for the sanctification of my brother priests. What a gift. Quietly doing that, not knowing how that will impact us throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout our lives, the prayers that you offer for us, and especially your contributions, Sister Catherine. Very grateful to you. Not only the sanctification of priests, but also the sanctification of you, God's people, of the church. The sisters are praying for you that you come to know Jesus in a more profound way, responding to the projects of the Spirit in your lives, so you can put into action what God is calling you to do. Because everybody has their niche. It's finding that out in our lives. The sister has found her niche. She's consecrated, set aside, in the spirit of St. Francis, which is another huge thing. St. Francis was a kind of a really wheeling person in his younger days. Tremendous conversion happens in his life, and he now detaches from everything, every earthly material type of thing that could get in the way of his relationship with Jesus. He sets it aside. This charism of poverty, this charism of poverty of spirit, is what Sister Catherine's been living. It's not she's doing out of um, all the necessities, of course, we have the basic necessities. But that vow, that promise of poverty, connects her to the spirituality of St. Francis. Simplicity of life. Poverty of spirit, being open to God's grace, knowing God is God and she isn't. That's poverty of spirit. And all things are possible with that approach. And we hear a little bit about poverty today in the gospel. Here is this poor man who is given a name in the gospel, Lazarus, a beggar completely detached from life, all the benefits of life, in misery, but given an identity, a name. And here is the other character in the story of the gospel today. And he's just referred to as the rich man. He's not given a name. We don't know what his name is. 
We don't know his identity. We just know that he is filled with himself and filled with all that the world has to offer. And he's embraced that so tightly in his life that he doesn't even see Lazarus as he walks past him, walks over him, missing what it means to be detached from stuff. So we, so we can be attentive to the Lazarus around us. Detachment. One of the characters of this religious community that Sister Catherine has said yesterday, 25 years ago, is to be detached so they can be attentive to the needs of those around them, which they have faithfully done, which Sister has faithfully done this past 25 years. And then this brings us around to the motto, their motto. Just like the bishop needs a coat of arms and a motto, religious orders do too. It helps center us. It helps us bring us back to the center a little bit, to, to, as a focus. Mine is grace and mercy. That just pulls me right back when I'm getting off the kilter. But for them, and for a sister, right? It's Caritas. It's Gaudium. It's Pax. Translation. Charity. Joy. And peace. The combination. The perfect combination. Sister, our prayer tonight for you is that you continue to be open to all the love that God sends you away, all the charity that God can send you away. Spirit, being attentive, being detached, growing in your spiritual life, growing in your sanctification, and being a joyful person. And she is. I don't know how many things I gave her to translate into Spanish, and she always took her with a smile. Gracious, joyful, and then our prayer for you, God's people's prayer for you to see in for the next 25 years, that you know that peace that just keeps us in a good place, no matter what. Because Jesus is peace. That's our prayer for you. Sister, congratulations. God bless you.
for the greater glory of God. The sanctification of the priest and of all the people of God. Congratulations.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just for our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering canceled out all sins. By His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Similar way when supper was in the heat of the chalice, and giving you thanks and said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink with me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving for this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victory by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance in your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette, and with all the saints, who is constant intercession in your presence, we rely for our faith in God. May the sacrifice of reconciliation be failed. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased in permanent faith and charity, your public church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope, and my honor bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. My parted brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Yeah. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy suffering. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit you to be separated from me. Amen.
us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessings of the animals. The blessings of the animals will be Tuesday, October 4th at 5 p.m. in the parking lot. Adoration. Join us for Eucharistic adoration every Friday in the chapel, all day until 5:30 p.m. Holy Land sale. Today, a group from the Holy Land are selling religious articles on behalf of the Christian Catholic families in Bethlehem. Those families used to sell their products to pilgrims who visited the Holy Land. This the beginning of the pandemic on March of 2020. The Holy Land was closed to pilgrims for almost two years. No one could travel to the Holy Land during those two years. The Holy Land recently opened the borders, but the number of pilgrims still are very small. It's a Holy Land Catholics depend totally on tourism for their living. They didn't have any income during those two years. It has never been worse than those two years in the Holy Land. They are in desperate need for our help here in the United States. The percentage of Catholics in the Holy Land has dropped from 20% to less than 1% in the last few years. Sales will be used to help support those Catholics and to encourage them not to immigrate. For your convenience, they accept cash, checks, and credit cards. Thank you. Thank you. Also, do keep your priests in in your prayers uh, during the parish and throughout the diocese. This is a Priesthood Sunday. It's a good time to lift us up to the Lord and say a few prayers for us. We appreciate it. Again, this is Catherine. Congratulations. May God bless you many more years. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thank you. Thank you.